be starting this evening off with 246 I'm so happy 246 let's stand together I'm so happy and here's the reason why Jesus took my burdens all Once my heart was heavy with the load of sin, Jesus took the load and gave me peace within. Now I'm singing as the days go by, Jesus took my burdens all away. All right, take some time, shake some hands.
All right, as we're coming back to your seats now, 360. 360, there is a fountain. 360, we'll sing the first, second, fourth, and fifth verses. 360, there is a fountain. 360. On that first verse together now. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. On the second verse together now. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. And there may I go vile as he wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away, and there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. Dear dying lamb, thy precious blood shall never lose its power till all the some church of God be saved to sin no more. Be saved to sin no more. Be saved to sin no more. Till all the ransomed church of God be saved to sin no more on that last verse now when this poor lisping stammering tongue lies silent in the grave then in a nobler sweeter song I'll sing thy power to save I'll sing thy power to save I'll sing thy power to save Then in a nobler, sweeter song I'll sing thy power to save
All right, one more time. Uh, we'll, we'll let you remain uh, seated until the third verse on this song. Uh, this is a song that Pastor and I enjoy singing uh, in the extreme. It's called Until Then. And uh, so uh, I'll sing the first verse, and then you guys will join us on the chorus. Then Pastor will sing the second verse, uh, then the same, and then we'll all join in together for the third. Uh, number 149 is the number of the song. 149, Until Then. Angie over stepping stone along a trail that's winding always upward this troubled world is not my final home but until then my heart will go that third verse now this weary world with all its toil and struggle may take its toll of misery and strife when its relief is like a waiting falcon when it's released, it's destined for the skies. But until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy.
until the day God calls me home. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Pastor Daniel's going to come at this time, and if you have the missionary prayer letter, uh, from last week, if you pull that out at this time, he's going to read a couple of our missionary uh, synopsis of some of the letters. And Daniel, if we'll just pray for those ones that you picked out there. Anybody need a copy of that letter? You need some? Okay, I need guys. I need. There's some on that table right under the bulletin board. I'm looking at it right now. Anybody? Some? Thank you, Zach. Zach's going to get them. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Thankful for your young people wanting to serve in church. I saw, you know, Miss Connie puts these together, and Miss Connie put a couple of my good friends on here, so uh, let's go ahead and highlight theirs. Um, Y'all flip to the back. If you got your missionary prayer letter, flip to the back. The two missionaries we're going to highlight are the Cattell's family and the Schrader family. So Cattell's family, you all know very well, and they're down at Anchor Baptist Church. They just had their fourth anniversary at the church they planted down there in the Craddock area. They saw many saved and baptized on their anniversary Sunday service. They started their first discipleship training with 50 attending. They purchased another building due to rapid growth and started a 5,000-foot remodeling project handled completely by church members. It expanded their sanctuary from 800 square feet to over 1,700 square feet, as well as a new 1,200-square-foot Sunday school wing fully furnished with three new classrooms and three baptistry changing rooms. So the special prayer request there are two buildings surrounded a bar that had been in business for over 30 years. If you remember, that was a big storefront complex that they have. They started in one building. They bought another building with one in between. And this is the one they're talking about, that bar. They began praying when the church was first planted that God would shut down the bar and would be used for his honor and glory. On January 24th, this year, the bar was officially disbanded by the state. Permits were pulled and revoked, and the church was approached to purchase the building. The building connects their current two buildings and has a courtyard in the rear, which is fenced. The church entered negotiations in February about a purchasing price and pray God will allow the purchase to be debt free. It will need to be gutted and rebuilt and allows for much future growth. And that would be huge. That would be amazing if they could get that building because that courtyard is huge. And that would be so much space with the upstairs, with more Sunday school class classroom wings there is so much room to grow if they're able to get that building it'd be a lot of work so pray for them pray for laborers in that church family so let's go down to the next one john and esther schrader they're in zambia we support them down in southern africa and pray and praise baby number 14 josiah they got a big family he was born january 17th and is truly a miracle baby josiah was found to be breech with his umbilical cord wrapped twice around his neck Praise God, he is okay. After the birth, however, it was determined that Esther had a serious E. coli infection that was rapidly multiplying in her blood. It had reached the point where they had to drive several hours each day round trip to a hospital for treatment. Infection has now reduced to the point she can handle future treatments by medication at home. So special prayer is continued improvement in Esther's recovery from the E. coli infection, spiritual warfare, and Satanism, including child sacrifice in their local area as well as much of Africa. Pray for that dark place that they're in. They're bringing light to that place. So these two places, Craddock is a dark place. Africa is a dark place. There's dark places in our neighborhood. We need to be praying, and prayer is the only way to get the light out. Let's pray for these two families and for the rest of our um, missionaries on this prayer letter. Pray with me, would you? Heavenly Father, thank you for calling and directing so many men and women to serve you, Lord. Thank you for calling them abroad. Thank you for calling them nearby. But thank you for calling and thank you for having in mind those people that they need to reach and give the gospel to and to preach to and to pray for, Lord. Thank you for bringing these people into the areas that you want them to serve, Lord. Lord, your desire is that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. We hear from Romans chapter 10 that we can't hear unless there's a preacher, Lord. Thank you for calling preachers. Thank you for calling Christians to go to these dark areas across our world. Thank you for these families, the Schraders, and thank you for the Cattells, and thank you for many, many others that we support that are doing just that, bringing the gospel to dark areas of the world. 
And we praise you for your plan of salvation that you've given to me, you've given to everyone in here, you've given everyone available to the whole world, Lord. Thank you so much for providing a Savior. Thank you so much for being the one who planned and put it together, all of it, Lord. Such an amazing plan. And we pray your, your safety and your presence would be on top of these families, Lord. We pray that your power would be worked through their lives, Lord, and we pray that they would be yielded to you. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. Please protect them from Satan, Satan's attacks. Lord, please help them to be an intervention for demo, demonic activity, Lord, child sacrifice even. And Lord, we even have that here some in this country, Lord. And I pray that you please would just work through us and work among us so we can see this stopped. Lord, we love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. ask Dawn to come at this time and she and I are going to try to do a song for you. Good to see Miss Angie. I was saying, I thought you guys were up in Charlottesville for a checkup today, but that's tomorrow, Rick said. Okay. Well, amen. We're glad she's up and moving about. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Crystal, for playing tonight. That was a beautiful job. It really was. So, What's that? Oh, you got that mic? Okay. Good. All right. So here we go. singing and then when I get there I've got Jesus forever amen amen now I belong to you all right young people you are dismissed take out your prayer list tonight maybe somebody would like to have prayer here you like to add to the list uh, Zach I'm gonna need you one moment before you go okay if you can help me a few minutes okay any prayer requests tonight brother Al Okay. 
Yes, yes. Wow. Mm. Oh, my soul. Yes. Granger's mother, right? Okay. Let's pray for Samantha. Al was sharing that with me earlier. Um, she's on chemo, so keep praying for Samantha. This is Sandy's brother's, yes, and Granger is his mom. Okay, so Samantha. And it's Sharon Pierce, the one we prayed for about after she retired from the shipyard, she got COVID and has had complications ever since. So if you would, to pray for her, Sharon Pierce. Anyone else tonight? All right. Yes, Miss Christine. Uh, I thank God that my grandma said that I'm going to have to do this And I thank God that when you give me a treatment, but I got all the medicine in my leg. Okay. You, she'd gone to the hospital, and that she had, they found she had arthritis in her leg. But uh, we're glad you're back home, and we'll pray for you in that. Oh. Is that what it was? She does have arthritis. Yes, she does have the arthritis. Yeah, and then we need to keep praying for her. It's in your leg, right, Christine? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Someone else? Melissa? Okay. Aaron, we're praying for him to get this kidney. Let's pray for Aaron tonight. Someone else? Yes, Jason. Okay, uh, he's asking, I'm saying this because folks back home with the camera here, uh, Jason's asking for prayer, he's going to a vision clinic in Chesapeake, having difficulty with his right eye, so we need to pray about that. Someone else? Yes, Kylie. Oh no, okay. Wow, Sean, her husband, uh, and he's gone to, he's away for a month, I think, right? Okay, he's, he's pulled a muscle and can't hardly move, lifting weights. Okay, so maybe we can get Jerry and his team to stretch him out or something. I don't know. Yeah, we have to go all the way to the Great Lakes there. Okay. Zach is part of a weightlifting group that gets together. Brother Jerry Snow heads it up at one of the gyms, and the young guys come out, and Jerry teaches them things. and. You guys get there like at 4 in the morning, don't you? At 3.30 in the morning. I think the weights would stay on the ground if I had to do 3.30 in the morning. Somebody else? Yeah. Yes, Deborah. Uh, I think Sharon, remember my brother John's mom, about the 20-year-old wife, um, they were there and um, we Okay. Yeah, that could be a definite, definite problem there. Uh, Deborah's asking a prayer for her brother, Scott, who's got some corporal tunnel uh, issues, but he drives a truck, so it's a, it's a big issue. We need to pray for him. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Sarah's asking a request for peace dealing with uh, the children, Emily and Elliot. Okay. How many of you have ever gone through a situation where your children don't let you have peace? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll pray for you, Sarah, definitely. And uh, young couple that came the other day that Miss Deborah invited, they sat over here, uh, Jeremy and Jessica. And a little baby, two-month-old Olivia, they were here. So pray for that family. And it's good to, Sarah's got a friend with her tonight from Pennsylvania. Okay, wonderful. Is it, is it Joanna? I got it. All right. Super. So you pray for her. And um, yes, Jason. Yes.
Yes. Uh, Jason had a prayer request for folks who have been invited to church and been witnessed to and pray that they'll come and uh, the Lord will continue to deal with those hearts who have been witnessed to. Amen. Good. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, Zach. Okay, is it on here? Yes. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, it's about eighth line down. Zach's request for friends uh, James and Vander for their salvation and that they'll come to church. Someone else. Yes, Tom. I'm sorry, Tom. Yes, Rebecca and Simon. Okay. She came Sunday, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, praise the Lord. Pray for Rebecca and Simon and anybody. Yes, Irving. Kathy, okay. As uh, Irving says, there's a friend of theirs named Kathy, and she has stage four cancer. If you would, to pray for Kathy. Okay. Yes, Callie. Okay. Praying for James. Sure. Let's pray for James tonight. Son. Okay. Someone else. Mary. Unspoken requests. Are there unspoken requests tonight? Anybody? Okay. Got a few tonight. Praying for something on your heart. You don't want to say what it is. You just want to get your brothers and sisters to pray with you about it. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Okay. What we're going to do, um, you're welcome to pray at the altar, like I've said before. You can pray in your seat. Um, uh, I'm going to, we're going to pray silently for a few minutes, and then I'll come up and close. Uh, but keep praying. Even when I'm praying here at the end, uh, keep praying for the ones that, that are on this list. And try to remember each of them as you, if you possibly can. If you can't, then at least some of them. And Keep this during, list during the week that you can be able to pray for folks. I know that for the ones who made these requests would really covet your, your, request, your uh, prayers for them. Okay? All right, let's go to prayer.
Father, you invite us, yea, command us to come and to seek you and to pray. Yea, Lord, we want to. We, we seek you with our heart tonight for these different ones on this list. Lord, folks that need your help. And uh, Lord, we ask you to meet their needs and to come on alongside there and to touch their bodies for those who are sick. And a lot of requests tonight, dear Lord, for people sick and also those who are not saved and wanting to see their loved ones and friends and those who've invited to come to church and, and even invited to Jesus and witnessing to them. Lord, I pray for the salvation of the ones who have been ministered into in that way in the witnessing. God, save them. God, bring them to the house of God. May the word of God just penetrate their heart with the spirit of God speaking to them. Lord, we do thank you for each and every one on this list. Again, we pray for, uh, for your grace to just be here in a special way. Lord, I covet your power as I preach your word. I cannot do it on my own. And Lord, I am poor and needy, yet you think upon me and as you do with each of your children. And I pray tonight that we will wait upon you and seek you and be still before you. And may, Spirit of God, you, you walk these pews and touch the hearts of your people with the word. And Lord, touch this preacher's heart too. And I, as I try to speak to the outside, may you speak to the inside of all of our hearts. And may we do what is right and draw close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Uh, just a couple quick announcements. Um, ladies Bible study this coming Saturday at 1030 here at the church. Uh, Churchwide visitation on March the 30th at 1030. And then, uh, Lord willing, uh, Carrie Charles will have ordination service on 6 p.m. on Easter evening. And we'll have some snacks afterwards. You don't have to worry about bringing snacks, folks. We'll have some things here already for you. The church will do that, and that'll be on that 31st. I, again, I wish we could have done a different night, but that's the only time Byron Fox could be with us, and he's preaching the ordination message that night. Did you enjoy Romeo Mendoza and Rose, Sister Rose, this past Sunday? Weren't they a blessing? Yes, they were. We enjoyed being with them and them coming over from Virginia Beach. They're going to the Philippines. So I think that's about it. Okay. I asked Zach if he would come, and he's going to read the passage, uh, 17 verses in Matthew 21. Matthew 21, turn there with us tonight. I'm preaching on Jesus in the midst, right? Jesus in the midst, and we're going to go over the story that probably what I would have preached this coming Sunday. This coming Sunday, we have what they call triumphal entry or coming to Jerusalem uh, with Christ, riding on the donkey, and then also um, Calvary during that week, and then the next week, next uh, Sunday after that, of course, the resurrection of Christ. So this is a great time. There are tracks out there in the track rack. Be passing those out, witnessing to people. Uh, people are a little more receptive because it's on their minds, okay? So we're going to read about the triumphal entry of Jesus, and Zach's going to read from verse 1 down to verse 17 of Matthew 21. All right, Matthew, uh, starting in verse 1 of chapter 21, it says, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethphage, unto the, mountain of, into, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go unto the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, uh, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt the full of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a, great, and a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. 
and Jesus said unto the, and Jesus went unto the temple of God, and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of the sold doves. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children and uh, the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased, and said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus saith unto them, Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast per, uh, perfected praise? And he left them and went out of the city unto Bethany, and he lodged there. All right, Elizabeth, uh, let me get this turned on here. Okay, there we go. Matthew 21. You know, Joshua, I had you on my mind today, Joshua Lampman, and I looked on my calendar you gave me for Christmas, the dad joke calendar, 365 dad jokes. All right, Joshua, did you know what Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh had in common? Their middle name. <laughs> the. That was a bad one. All dad jokes are bad. Okay, the. Duh. More like duh. <laughs> Who said duh? Did you say it, Miss Nolan? Duh. Duh it was duh. And that was a duh joke. That was a duh. That was a dud joke. Are you at least still enjoying the Christmas service? Uh. Yes, it does, but it's it's one that comes with they, they want it to be returned. <laughs> Ms. Dawn does, or at least the or the I should say the jokes returned. Anyway, all right, we're enjoying it, Josh. Thanks. All right, I'm preaching tonight on the cult, the crowd, and the children. The cult, the crowd, and the children. Um, just as we look at this, this story of Christ coming to Jerusalem, he's in an area called Bethphage and Bethany, located probably about a half a mile southeast of Jerusalem. You notice they talk about uh, Zion, which is the other word for Zion. Well, Zion in the Bible is a representation of the Jews, but especially the city of Jerusalem. And he's getting ready to go to Jerusalem. And, of course, this wonderful thing is going to take place where he rides into Jerusalem on this colt. If you, I don't have time to go to the passages in the other Gospels here, the other uh, co-Gospels, uh, because as you read it, you're going to find there's, a, there's an ass or a, uh, maybe the mama to this colt. And in this passage, it talks about the colt and the, the ass that came. But as you look at the other passages, you'll find that Jesus actually rode in on the colt. Now, that was quite interesting. You know, Dawn and I were talking about it. I thought, maybe he sat on the larger animal. Now, now here we go. Okay. The correct pronunciation of the word is donkey. Some of you who don't have it right, you say donkey, but it's donkey. That's a southern version. You'll, you'll get that later. Donkey. My wife has teased me about that for years. Uh, the coat, there in the other passage, it talks where Jesus is sitting, sitting on that. That animal in particular, you would think it would be on the larger animal, maybe lay his feet or legs across the, the coat, but actually he's sitting on the coat as he comes into Jerusalem. Uh, his disciples are approaching Jerusalem, and this marks the beginning of the end. This is right before Calvary. Or maybe we should change it and say the beginning of something new. That Jesus is going to be raised from the dead three days after Calvary. Uh, then would come the resurrection, and the church would move forward. Uh, thousands of people come. This is the time of the Passover. People are from all kinds of countries coming to celebrate the Passover there in Jerusalem when this takes place. Now, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, uh, it's a special thing. And we'll give you the verse there in a minute where it came from the Old Testament. 
The disciples, you know the title for the message? The disciples, the donkey, and the details. Okay? As we go along here, the cult was to be brought by the disciples, and the crowd, excuse me, the crowd starts praising Jesus. They take clothes, they lay them in the way, they take palm tree limbs and lay them in the way, and they're shouting and just rejoicing over this triumphal, we call triumphal entry of Jesus. And then we're going to learn something about how the children were wiser than all of them as we go along here, okay? Number one, simply the coat. Jesus gave his disciples a strange instruction. I want you to go into this village nearby and I want you to find a coat that's tied up. And this coat also had not been tamed. It's un unbroken. But it's tied up. And they go to where uh, another passage talks about where two streets meet in a corner. And so this this, uh, I'm going to say mama donkey and the, the baby, the colt, are tied up there. Uh, it's a wild donkey. How many of you remember the Sheffy movie? Remember what Sheffy, the great preacher in the mountains of Virginia? Uh, do you remember uh, uh, back in the 1800s, he's going down the road, he goes, he travels, he visits people in their homes. Back in those, those hills and those mountains, nobody seeming to care about their soul, trying to witness to them. He preached camp meetings and things like that, and people getting saved. Sheffy would be, was a great prayer warrior. It was nothing for him. Robert Sayer Sheffy, a real, real man, loved God, uh, would nothing be found on the side of a mountain uh, with a sheepskin underneath of him, praying for two hours at a time. He got a lot of prayers. You ought to read the book. He got a lot of prayers answered, even some things in the book not were in the film that we showed here. Uh, but do you remember the story where this, he's going down the road with his favorite horse, Gideon, and he loved Gideon. And as he's going down the road, he comes up to, and this is poor country back in the 1800s, comes up on a family, he's having to move, and they've got all their stuff packed on this little wagon, and the horse is laying on the ground. The horse had died. Well, Sheffy comes up, he talks to the, to the husband and the wife, and there's the kids, and he goes and sees and makes sure the animal did pass on. He gets up, and he pulls his hat off, and he starts to pray. And he says, Lord, please grant, and he stops. He was going to pray for another horse for these people. Well, his horse is still standing, Gideon. And he gives Gideon away. Very much a giving type of man. Didn't have a lot, but he gave what he had. That horse had taken him through the mountains of Virginia and West Virginia for many, many miles. Well, down the road, a town had, where they had horses for sale from out wild west were untamed. Again, you're dealing with a praying man. So he goes to the corral. And some of the guys who knew Sheffy's ministry, hey, one said to the other, we got to get a horse for the preacher. He needs that horse to get to where he has to go and keep on ministering. And so they scrounged up some money enough to buy a horse for the preacher. And they were having an auction on the horses. And uh, preacher, is there a certain one that you look? And he pointed one out and said, yeah, I think I want that one. Well, the auctioneer did his thing and he wound up getting the horse. Well, Sheffy goes inside the corral, and they said, uh-uh, preacher, these horses have not been tamed. He gently reaches over to the horse and pats it on its head. It jerks a little bit, and it calms down. He goes to the side of the horse, and he gets himself up onto the back of the horse. Remember, he's a praying man. A miracle took place just in that alone, you know. Jesus is going to ride this untamed colt. And it's not going to be a problem in the world. Hmm. So anyway, I just thought that share a little. I, got, I just thinking about Sheffy today. Why, why Jesus, why didn't Jesus, don't answer out loud, think to yourselves here, but why didn't Jesus just call the donkey from where it was? If he could see Nathaniel under a fig tree, 
and not even be there. He's God of very gods walking on earth. Why couldn't he have made the colt and the mama to come to him? I started thinking of that. Wow. Why is he sending his disciples to go and get this colt and then even go up to start to unleash the colt and someone says, what are you doing? Basically, that's in the John Charles version. Okay. What are you doing? The Lord has need of him. That's what Jesus told him to say. The master has need of him. They didn't say a word. It's like God tamed the people while he also tamed the goat. Anyway, they bring the coat to Jesus. And of course, you know the rest of the stories. It says there that they put the clothes in the way. They put palm branches down. Everybody's going to start shouting and praising. Well, this comes from Zechariah 9, verse number 9. And the Bible says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, the king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. The humility of Christ is seen here, but they're going to wind up praising who he is. Um, why? They bring this unbroken colt, and their answer is, anybody, the Lord has need of him. We are in the brink of Jesus. You know, it's a beautiful picture. So many of you tonight, I don't think it was a mistake, but I think a lot of you tonight asked for prayer for folks you've been witnessing to, people you're inviting to church, you know. Uh, we're to bring people, I know this is a terrible illustration, but we're to bring untamed sinners to the Lord Jesus Christ. Their stubborn wills, they're not wanting to be saved. Some of you have got loved ones that you've tried to witness to and you've tried again, but they're so stubborn they do not want to get saved. Well, don't give up. It takes a lot of prayer, doesn't it? Just like old Sheffy. It takes the Lord to do it, doesn't it? Just like Jesus tamed him the colt. And there have been men and women who have gotten saved who you and I would have thought, never that will happen in a million years. But God get a hold of their heart. Don't give up praying. God has the power to do that. That old unbroken coat submitted to Jesus and the submission of that coat, it's another picture that's involved here. He's coming into Jerusalem. Prophesied in Zechariah 9.9. Well, it's a fulfillment showing forth, and it talks about the king in some of the passages dealing with this. Okay? Hosanna. You know, praise to the king in the highest and so forth. Well, as he's coming in, it's a picture of the King Jesus of when one day in the future, yet to be, when Christ will come again to Jerusalem. He's right near the Mount of Olives in this picture. But he comes again on the Mount of Olives and we're talking about after the tribulation period is over. We call it Armageddon. He comes back, but his feet touch the earth. And they touch the Mount of Olives, and the Mount of Olives splits in two. I believe it's east to west, if I'm not mistaken. I may be wrong. It's a beautiful picture of the coming of Jesus Christ. Yet to come. Yet riding humbly. All right, Andrew, here we go. Riding humbly on a colt. But when he comes back again in Revelation 19, he's coming back on a white charger. His name will be called Faithful and True. And he will come back. And let me tell you, Jerusalem will fall at his feet. Amen. Wonderful picture here. That's why we call it the triumphal entry of Christ. All right, we're seeing the colt. Let's look at the crowd that's involved. I was trying to figure out who was there. How many of you often heard that the ones that were there uh, were praising him, Hosanna in the highest and so forth, uh, but they're 
And, but they later on during the week yelled out, crucify him. Yes. I started studying and I found that some of the ones that were there, not only were the disciples there, okay? And people took some of their clothing and, and, and laid it, and like we said, in the way. But what was quite fascinating, some of the people that were there were not just the disciples, but some of them, and another text says, some of them came because they had seen and been there when Lazarus was raised from the dead. And then there are those who came who had heard about Lazarus being raised from the dead, and they're in this, this area. They're there with the triumphal entry. And then all the people who came back for Passover, no doubt they're getting in town, they're starting to hear about this Jesus. They may have heard about him. He was, he was ministering for three and a half years. He, he it probably reached around some parts of the, of the territories and places that they came from. You go to Pentecost, 15 nations were represented as they heard the, the, the apostles preach the things of God and the gospel. And they said, we, we hear them speak these wonderful things in our own languages. Side note. The tongues in the New Testament were languages. You say, what about unknown tongues in 1 Corinthians 14? Un the word unknown there is in italics. It was, that means the word was supplied by the translators. Just something to think about. Okay. Anyway, um, there he is. And the crowd is cheering on. Look at verse number 8. And a very great multitude. And these chief priests and all of them, they, they're seeing every bit of this. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and straw them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed, there was multitudes in front of him, and there were a multitude behind him. Saying, Hosanna. What does Hosanna mean? Save now, Save now Al. Look at the next phrase. Save now, they're crying out, to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, save now in the highest. What are they crying out for? Are they crying out? About Calvary? No. What are the disciples crying? They're crying the same thing that these people are saying. They're crying out because they're wanting a, and they're believing, especially the disciples, are believing that Jesus is coming into Jerusalem, a fulfillment of Zechariah 9 9, and now the kingdom is going to be set up. But that was not God's plan. This crowd is crying out, hoping to see that now we got a, our Jewish king is going to sit on the throne of David. The crowd is praising God over that, you know. Hosanna in the highest. But just like all human hearts, you remember how Jesus said that time, he didn't, the scriptures basically say he didn't trust the hearts of humans. He didn't. Because you and I know our hearts are wicked inside. And our hearts will say and do things and promise things and not follow through. Jesus knew that. He knew when dealing with man, he knew, he knew that. And how fickle we can be. Let's take it a little step further. You ever notice how sometimes a, a crowd can become fickle? If you please. Fickle. And they were fickle with their praise. Soon their cheers became jeers. Soon the blessings became boos. Because Jesus goes to a cross and he didn't defend himself. And that crowd wanted him to defend himself. And we preached on Judas the other night. Judas Iscariot. Maybe the, one of the reasons he came and, and betrayed the Lord was maybe to get Jesus to at least stand up and say, yes, I'm going to set up the kingdom now, because Judas wanted a kingdom. And those other disciples wanted to. But how fickle they are. And even at the cross, 
what happened to the rest of the disciples? John was the only one that we have listed at the cross. And he's standing next to Jesus' mother, Mary. And Jesus, even at the cross, the compassion of Christ, woman, and it was a respectful term in that day. Woman, behold thy son to John. John, behold Mary, your mother. You're going to need to take mama home and take care of her. Jesus took care of his mama even while he was dying. I, I, maybe I'm going a little side note, Al. I have very little respect who don't have respect, people, young people who don't have respect for their elders, especially mom and dad. Amen. Amen. You could have said amen there, you know. Some of you are getting older and you got those young ones. You need to get an amen in on that one. Yeah. And people get, they change their minds quickly when they don't get what they want. And soon the crown him, crown him, becomes what? Crucify him. Crucify him. Look at verse number 12. We've done the coat and the crowd, but look at the children. This is why I really want to bring to just a couple thoughts and then we're going to go. Because Tom Camp has to get to bed, and I've got to make sure he gets to bed on time. Oh, okay. Don't tell me that. Because we could be here until 8.55. You only live five or ten minutes down the road. Okay. All right. Jesus, verse 12, went into the temple of God. He cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple. Uh, they were money changers. You had to have certain, the Jewish money, they changed into that and stuff. No doubt they were making some money off of changing money. And uh, he said is, in verse 13, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. That verse actually is taken from two separate verses in the Old Testament. Okay? But because of Tom, I'm not going to be able to get into that tonight. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. So even, he, wow, in just a few days, he's going to be crucified. But he's still, he's still ministering, knowing he's going to be crucified in a few days. Healing paralytics, healing blind people. Mm. What a Savior. He says, verse 14, And the blind and the lame came, we really did that. Verse 15, And when the chief priests and scribes, here comes the religious crowd, they are there, they see all of what's taking place with this triumphal entry. They saw the wonderful things that he did. And the children crying in the temple and saying, Save now, Hosanna to the son of David. And that religious crowd were sore displeased and said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? Jesus, don't you hear these children crying out and say, and you're the, calling you the son of David and Hosanna and save now as a king? As I said the other day, you remember it was Pilate was the one that put the thing up on the inscription above the cross in three different languages. Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. Because that was the the communicative languages during those days. This, what do you say? This is the king of the Jews. This is the king of the Jews. This is the king of the Jews. And you remember what this crowd went to him and said, you need to take that down. What I have written, I have written. Mm. Yea, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. You know, it's funny watching our little kids as they sang Sunday. You know, I loved it. And Miss Hall's sunbeam class. And Gabby's working hard with the class, trying to get them to sing and, and stuff. And we have, we have one of them. I just, I just die laughing. I sat over here because I want to see Madison grab the microphone. But she didn't. I don't think she grabbed it. I think she put her mouth right up on it, you know. I call it Madison and her backups, you know. But the, the perfected praise, the praise from a little heart, a child's heart, you know. It's a, it's a special thing. And Jesus uses this. As Jesus always, whenever you find children, a lot of times the disciples, a lot of times other people try to keep children away from Jesus. What did Jesus normally say? 
come, suffer them, allow them to come unto me, right? And then he would take some and sit them on his lap and bless them. The tenderness of Christ with children. Parents, grandparents, I know we, there's a time for discipline. I understand that. But you need to have a tender heart like Jesus with, your, with kids and to love the kids and want them to be there. Amen. Amen. If the kids were in here, they'd say amen. He cleanses the temple. He heals the blind and the lame. Look at all the... Co- mm. And then the anger of the Lord's enemies, and then the children start praising God. But there is an important thing involved here. It's the importance of, of taking time with the kids, you know, spending time with them. I appreciate all of you. Ms. Nola, what you did the other night with those kids, that was dynamite, and I appreciate that. And all of our teachers with the children, all those who work in nursery, taking time with the kids. Be patient. Yes, when we have to correct when we have to correct. I understand, but be patient, you know. And just a little side note for moms and dads and grandparents. You know, kids when they, like our little Grayson and little Alex, Alex Center, she's two years old, Grayson's two years old. And also, um, Ethan is now 10 months, getting ready to turn 10 months old. Oh, I'm, I'm excited for Ethan. Um, I'm praying that they'll get saved at an early age. I'm asking God to call Ethan and Grayson into ministry. Why not? The Lord can only say no, but I can ask, you know. And uh, anyway, and you know, what do we normally do when they fall down or they mess up or they do something, you know? A lot of times we pick them up, dust them off a little bit, you know. Or maybe they tried to do something you told them to do. And they did the best they could. And what do you normally say? Good job. That's the exact words I was thinking. Good job, right? Just a little tidbit. This is a side note for those of you raising kids. How come we don't say that when they get older? We expect them to be perfect even if they're older years and teenage years and so forth. Well, they ought to have learned it by now, preacher. Have you or me, I point the finger back. When I point my finger away, see, see where that is? I got three fingers pointing back at me, okay? Have you or I arrived? You think our Heavenly Father wants to crush us after everything we try to do, he says to do? I kind of think there's a band of angels up there saying, John, good job. <laughs> yeah, you messed it up a little bit, but good job anyway. <laughs> Just a side note tonight. But spending time with your children, I know it's not easy. Yeah. And grandkids can be a trial too, right? Right, Nana? Oh, my soul. She's a sucker for it. Mm. Question tonight, and I close because we have to go. Tom Camp is itching to leave. Uh, about the colt, is your will surrendered to the Savior like that colt did that day? The crowd, are you occupied with praising God in the right, with the right heart? They change their tune later on. Crucify them. The children, do you yourself as an adult have a childlike faith to believe God? And then lastly, what did Jesus do? He praised them as if they had more wisdom than the scribes and the Pharisees. Are we as wise as a little child can be? Okay, preacher, where you don't believe in spanking? Let me tell you something. I believe in spanking. The Bible teaches it in the book of Proverbs. Yes, it does, but doing it in love. And it's not easy because you're dealing with, yes, a stubborn will, but God 
chastens us and he does it in love. And maybe something we can learn from the triumphal entry. Jesus one day will come again, amen? And I'm looking forward to that day. If it happens later on, and we rise up and come on back with him, don't we? And the first time he comes, and the rapture could be today, he doesn't come to the earth, to the Mount of Olives. He goes to the clouds, and we go up and meet him. Glory. Mm, I'm thinking of Ray today, Al. That trumpet will sound. Glory. But then he's going to come back after those seven years. And his feet will touch the ground. And King Jesus, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Amen. Uh, Al, I want to read this card. I, I really wanted to read it Sunday, but I think you shared it with me. Uh, this is from the family. Uh, Sal, Sandy and Al and uh, Judy, that's Miss Al, or excuse me, Sandy's mom. To my church family, thank you all for your prayers and cards and love during uh, my dad's illness. Remember Sandy's dad was sick and he passed on. Said the plants were beautiful. God has truly blessed us with a wonderful church family. Uh, we thank God for Sandy and she's tending to her mom tonight. So thank God for Al. And Al, brother, you've jumped in there and helped every which way you can. So thank God for both of you. And we thank God for Ray and the life of Ray McConkey. And one day, we're going to see him again. And I'm going to see King Jesus too. Amen? All right. I'm one minute over, Tom. Everybody ready to go home? Tom's tired of me picking on him. It's all right. He, kn he knows I love him. Father, dismiss us with your great love. Thank you for just this wonderful truth that we learned tonight, that Lord, help us to praise you, to be the right kind of crowd that praises you from a true heart. Help us to take time and patience and to see the wisdom of a childlike faith. And then, dear, dear Lord, thank you for the humility of yourself as you came into Jerusalem, yet we know that and on that colt, but one day you'll come back on that charger. And we look forward to coming back with you. Encourage your people tonight from your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh. I'm going to pass them out and invite somebody to church, okay?